AET want to restructure us. They're planning a restructure for September that if it was implemented in full would take over £700,000 away from the school's budget. They're cutting the teachers, they want to cut the support staff as well, they want to lessen the amount of the senior leadership team we've got and bring us in line with other academies in the area. But we're a very different school to other academies. For one, we're split site and the extra funding we get for being a split site doesn't cover the costs of having double all the facilities of a normal secondary school. At the end of this week, we're losing about five staff who are really, really crucial, experienced members of staff. Then we have others who, because of what's going on, are looking elsewhere and thinking, I can't work under this environment. It's a proper comprehensive. It's, it's, it's taking from the most deprived areas in, in, in um, tendering uh, and some of the most affluent areas as well. So we have the complete range of students. Uh, we do have a lot of needs within the school. We've got an autistic hub here. So we've got some very specialised provision and we have got other SEND students within the college that also need a high level of care. This is my community. I went to this school as a student. So um, it's a community that's very close, are very supportive of one another. It's a community that properly cares about how their kids do in their local school. Staff are very concerned that uh, cuts to the establishment will mean the school can't deliver the curriculum in the way they want to and it can't look after the kids in the way they need to be looked after with all the support, including medical support, uh, so that the kids are uh, properly protected. <laughs> AET um, was founded in 2008 and since then they've just been stealing money from schools and mm. just not really helping out the schools that they're meant to be helping. When the academies were first brought in people talked about you know, the schools could support each other and be part of a family but you know, this doesn't, doesn't work here at all. I mean there's, there's, there's no local support for, for provided for this school. AET does also have the dubious honour of being the first academy trust to have a school taken back into local authority control in the Isle of Wight. That is indicative of the poor performance that they have given, you know, that they've given to the schools that are meant to be part of their family. We're extremely concerned that Academies Enterprise Trust now seems to be increasingly taking money away from individual schools' budgets to sustain and maintain a central structure which we frankly don't believe uh, is demonstrating real worth to the school. Every increase in pounds spent at the centre is a decrease in pounds spent on kids directly in the schools. The national benchmarking website makes it pretty clear that it's like around 2.2 2 million that they take from this school which equates to about £1,200 per pupil. If you're going to look at a school and making cuts, surely you've got to look at your central organisation and think what you could do there realistically. I was just looking at Manantry Secondary School. Their trust only takes £200 per student. We should be investing in our students and their future, not taking it away to pay large salaries. Our CEO is earning £300,000 a year. Why? Got leaky ceilings, black mould everywhere. It's just atrocious. Why are they not spending money on the buildings. These students are suffering classrooms that haven't changed since I went to school and I'm getting on a bit now so I came here. <laughs> We've not had enough teachers to support us. There's less resources which means a lot more things are broken and they're not being able to be replaced. There's less um, learning support for not only mental health but struggles with school. A few years back there was a restructure in which our school councillor went. Um, that was a, a big blow for kids who need the support and now obviously with what everyone's gone through pandemic wise and lockdowns kids are really really struggling with their well-being mental health and, and all those factors and staff will bend over backwards to support them in any way they can but we are going to lose too many of them and there's going to be too much additional hours and responsibilities which are unrealistic to give the kids what they need and that's what we are desperate to do. Recovery is not just a buzzword, recovery needs investment. Where is that investment going for AT? It's going on their regional management structures, it's going on their salaries, it is not going to the education of the children who have already had their chances blighted in some cases very very seriously by what they have gone through for the last year. The real worry for us is that they've got a national AET template, a model, which they're seeking to apply to schools, and it doesn't feel to us as though the application of that template has any 
flexibility in it in terms of actually recognising what the needs of the school and the school's community are. Being a parent as well as a teacher we want the best for our students. I feel I know my students and um, you know we want to give them a well-rounded education. I don't think AET know our students. I feel we're just an exam factory and one size doesn't fit all. Education is not just one thing, it needs to be differentiated for different types of students who need different types of support. The staff overwhelmingly have lost confidence in AET and they want to leave AET. We can't afford to really stay with them now. The relationship's broken. You can see from the strength of feeling today, we've had parents, we've got students, we've not just got our staff here, we've not just got our union members, we've got the whole community represented here. Um, and that's because the actions that AET have chosen to take have affected the whole community here. Our parents are amazing. They are so supportive of us, the school, the area they live in, and we need to do more for our kids. There's a lot of support and yet AET just isn't really listening. They're kind of, they're just thinking, for themselves, they're being greedy, they're being selfish and they're lying. The first step would be that no jobs are lost and the full funding per pupil is, is restored to its current levels um, as a starting point and um, we'd like our local po politicians um, to, to back us. Um, uh, so it's been a, a week since we went public and we've been a lot of community support but I've yet to hear anything from, from the local politicians about um, support from the school and the, and the local community and the students that we teach. We need so. to maintain our senior leadership team, we need to maintain our middle leader, we need to maintain our main scale teachers who are doing a wonderful job every single day. We also need to maintain our support staff, whether they're office staff, whether they're cleaning staff, whether they are pastoral support, because our children at this time really need more support than ever in their whole lives. We cannot have any cuts. Any cuts are not acceptable to us, and they are not acceptable to the kids. And that's, that's why we have to fight against it.